Hey everybody, it's Nikki again, and we are going to do another tutorial of a disorderly threads bag this week. This time we are going to do the sugar skull. And this pattern, or this design rather, came out just a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was really excited about it, so I made one right away, and when I took it to work, my coworkers went crazy. So I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to like this design, which is why I chose it for my next tutorial. We are going to now get started. First of all, you're going to need some sort of solid white fabric. Um, the fabric I'm, I chose to use is called suede cloth. It's not actually suede, it's a polyester. And this is in the uh, apparel or garment fabric section of your local fabric store. I got this at Joanne Fabrics. You will also need some pieces for the eye, nose, and mouth area. You can use felt, which is what I did in this example, but since um, it gets stitched all the way around the edges, you don't have to use something that doesn't, doesn't fray. So for this example, I'm just going to use a piece of basic white cotton and a piece of black corduroy. You're also going to need a lining, and I found this fabulous print at Joanne Fabrics. There's also some just like this at fabric.com, and I just thought it was perfect because it's a sugar skull and we're making a sugar skull bag. You'll also need um, some batting. This is a low loft, which means thin batting. A zipper, it has to be at least seven inches long. Mine is nine inches, it doesn't matter if it's longer because you just cut off the excess anyhow. Then you are going to need, for the zipper pull, a piece of felt. And I prefer to use a wool blend felt because it wears a lot better than the acrylic stuff that you get at the chain stores. And um, you can get this online. Etsy has a lot of sellers who have it. You will need some sort of ribbon or small rickrack for the, this part of the zipper pull. And then you'll need a piece of ribbon up top here. And if you want, you can choose to put a little D-ring here or some sort of key ring. And then you can hook it onto your bag or use one of those carabiner things, if I'm pronouncing it right. And that's what I do with mine. I have mine hooked onto my um, handbag handle. You will need also um, cutaway stabilizer for your hoop. And then later on in the project, you will use a piece of tearaway stabilizer. And one of the fun parts is you get to choose the colors. Uh, in this example, these are the colors of the bag that are in the instructions that come with the design. Um, but for the, my second one, I'm going to um, do a little bit of variation and I'm going to use some other colors. So what I'm going to do is, since the instructions refer to a specific color, I wrote out on this sheet of paper the colors that are mentioned in the instructions and then the colors that I'm going to be using instead so I don't get confused. I think we're ready to get started. The first stitch is the um, placement stitch for your zipper. Now that we have our placement stitch, we next need to tape down the zipper. Now the zipper goes on the hoop um, face up, so the zipper pull um, up and to the left. And you just will center it between those two placement lines and then secure it with a little bit of tape. And have the tape go um, not too far towards the center of the zipper because you want to avoid your needle stitching through that tape because otherwise it gets all gummed up and sticky and gives you problems with stitching. And this is what it looks like. Then our next step is to turn the hoop over, take our medium sized piece of lining fabric and tape that down. Now when you have a, a, a design like this which is called a one-way design meaning that it only looks right in one direction as, as opposed to sideways it doesn't it's not going to look right when you're opening the bag. When you have that you want to be extra careful when you tape it down to make sure you don't put it in upside down. And this is what, what I do. This is how I want it to be once, the, once this bag is finished. So I just simply fold it up like this, and that's how we need to tape it. And I will just put my pieces of tape on. Okay, now the tape is on that side. And then you just flip it over, and what I like to do in order to keep this fabric out of the way when I'm stitching is I pin it to the stabilizer up here. Then we need to take our medium sized piece of white fabric 
and then tape it to the hoop also. And you're lining up the um, top of the fabric, the right side down, aligned with the bottom of the zipper. Now the fabric I'm using has a right side and a wrong side, so I'm putting the right side down. And the right side, if you're not familiar with that term, it just basically means the, the pretty side or the nice side. And some fabrics don't really have a right or a wrong side, so in that case it doesn't matter. You can just pick whatever side you want. Okay, now that we have all of our um, fabrics in our zipper, we are going to do the second stitch, which is going to secure all those items together. All right, that stitch is completed. Our next step is to remove the hoop from the machine and then remove this tape. It's important to do this because otherwise that tape is gonna be inside your bag forever and then it'll make little fun crunchy sounds. And um, I don't want that to happen, so I'm removing the tape. In addition, um, you don't want, again, you don't want your, your needle to go through the tape. Next, we will need to take our medium-sized piece of batting, lay it in the hoop right here, and then fold this white fabric over the top of it and pin it in place. And the lining stays out of, out of the way right where it is. Don't move that yet. You're going to be doing a lot of embroidery on this part, and we don't want that to be embroidered into the lining because then it won't look nice on the inside, which is the, the main purpose of a lining. I usually like to put two pins at the bottom, just like this, and put them very close to the edge so there's no chance of your needle hitting them and damaging your machine or, or you. And then I put usually just one pin on, the, on each side. You could put two if you wanted. And again, right at the edge of the hoop, just like that. So then we want to return our hoop to the machine. Now that the hoop is back on the machine, the next step is all the placement lines for all the various appliques that we'll be doing. All right, those stitches are done. So then you want to cut all the little jump threads. And then next, take your black fabric and lay it over the eyes and the nose that you just stitched the outlines for and make sure that the entire area is covered with your black fabric. And then do your tack down stitch. Next, you wanna remove your hook from the machine and then trim around the eyes and the nose and just trim as closely as possible without cutting that stitching. So this is what it looks like after the excess fabric has been trimmed. And our next step will be to stitch the little scallops around the eyes. All right, now we have the little scallops around the eyes completed. I've changed my thread to blue and um, we will be scrolling or stitching some little scrolls around the face and then a little heart on the center of the nose. Okay, so we're done with the little heart on the nose and the scroll designs. And next is um, little teardrops and some flowers and some other cool stuff. So that's the next one. There are a lot of thread changes in this design. So um, but it makes it more fun because then you get to um, choose all the colors in every bag that you make and you can make each one unique. Okay, so we've got the little scallops and flowers and teardrops all stitched. So our next step is to lay our white fabric over the placement lines for the mouth and the teeth area. And we've changed our thread to black and we are going to stitch the little details of the teeth. All right, next we need to trim the fabric around the edges of the teeth and you wanna trim very closely. Okay, now our next step is to stitch all the details around the mouth, the eyes and the nose with our black thread. Okay, so we finished all of the black stitching, and next we will be doing the little circles on the, in the center of the flowers. Great. 
Now we need to remove our hoop from the machine. Stitch that little jump, cut that little jump stitch. Now we need to do a couple things before we move on to the next step. First of all, we need to take our small piece of white fabric, line up the edge of that fabric with the edge of the zipper and the placement stitch, and then tape that down. Then we need to turn our hoop over then fold down this fabric right here and secure it with some tape or you can pin it from the, from the front of the hoop. I'm just putting a piece of tape right there. Then we need our other piece of lining fabric which I want to go in this direction so I'm going to fold it down like that, line it up with the upper placement stitch and tape that down as well. And we're going to turn it over, put it back in the machine, and we're going to be stitching the seam right here. Okay, now that that's been stitched, we're going to remove the tape. Then we'll take our small piece of batting, lay it in the hoop, and then fold that white fabric right over that. And then you'll need to pin that in place as well and rem remember as close to the edge of the hoop as you can get. Once you've got your pins in place you'll want to stitch the little scroll pattern at the top. It says blue in the instructions but I'm going to use green. We have stitched the little scroll pattern at the top, and next is the little flower in the center. We will now be stitching the center of the flower. Then next, we are going to be stitching these two little dots right up here at the top. Okay, so we're now finished with the embroidery and applique portion of our project. So we're going to take our hoop off the machine, Trim those little jump stitches. Then we need to open our zipper. Very, very important. That enables us to get the, the bag turned right side out when we're finished. So you can unzip it right to about here. This little scroll right here is a good spot. Then we want to take our little ribbon loop. And um, I mentioned earlier you can attach a D ring or a key ring or something like that to it. I'm going to try that with this project. Um, this is a little D-ring with a little lanyard hook attached to it. You want to center that on your design. Make sure the edges of the ribbon are well outside of where the stitching will be. And the stitching is right above this little flower here. So I'm going to center it right here and make sure I have plenty of ribbon outside of that stitching line. And that just gets taped down like this. Then we want to turn around our hoop, untape this lining here, fold it up. Then you can undo the pins on the front side and put them back in, this time catching that lining. If you're new to sewing and embroidery, um, just get used to the fact that you're going to stab yourself with pins. It's pretty much just a, a fact of, of life and it's inevitable. Um, eventually you won't be quite as traumatized by it. Um, I've been sewing for many years so I barely even flinch anymore when I get stabbed with a pin. Anyway, there you go. Then we want to take our piece of white fabric. This is the back fabric. We're going to put it right side down or face down center it in the hoop, then take our piece of batting, center that in the hoop, finally 
that piece of tearaway stabilizer I mentioned at the beginning of the video. We're going to put that in the hoop and cover the entire thing. And we're going to pin it down and again as close to the edge of the hoop as you can possibly get so your machine does not hit the pins. And it might be a little bit more difficult to get through all these layers. Make sure you use pins that are nice and sharp. There we go. I'm going to put one in the middle and one at the top. And that should be enough. And this stabilizer is used in order to avoid your presser foot being caught in the batting that you're using. Um, it's kind of kind of thick and, and um, it's very loosely um, bonded together. However, there are some types of batting, like cotton batting, that is, it's more, um, it's more dense, and the presser foot is not as likely to get caught on it. So if you have that type of batting, you may not need the stabilizer. And this is what it looks like. We're going to put it back in our machine, and it is going to stitch completely around the entire design. All right, we're almost finished. We're going to remove our hoop from the machine again, and you can take out the center pin if you want. We're going to flip this over, take our remaining piece of lining fabric, and we're going to put it face down or right side down. Make sure we cover up all our stitching, and then just secure that with some tape. Just like that. Then we're going to place this back on our machine for the final stitch. And the final stitch is going to go almost entirely around the design. It's going to leave a small opening at the bottom, and that's going to allow us to turn it after it's finished st stitching. And that's it for the stitching portion. We remove it from the machine, take out our pins, and now we're ready to remove the design from the hoop itself. Then we can pull off our tearaway stabilizer. Then we can remove all the pins from the fabric. And this is what we have. The next step is to cut out the design. So I use a sewing scissors because um, I find my embroidery scissors are just not big or sharp enough to cut these things out. Um, you're cutting through a lot of layers of fabric, so you want something really sharp. So um, this is a Ginger brand scissors. Um, I've had it for years. I've had no complaints about it. Another brand that I hear good things about is Kai, K-A-I. So those are two that you want to check out. So I am just cutting across the bottom here, and I'm leaving about 3 quarters of an inch underneath that opening because we need to turn that inside in order to close it. Then for the rest of the design, I'm cutting about maybe an eighth of an inch from the stitching lines. And then when you have these corners here, it's kind of hard to see probably, um, so to take my word for it, you want to cut diagonally towards them and go right up to the stitching but not through it. So that's something you want to take your time and do very slowly and very deliberately. Then around these curves here, what you can do is cut little snips, again right to the stitching and not through it. Don't cut your stitching. Just like that and that'll help it turn more easily. And there we are.
Next, you want to peel back the two layers of lining fabric. And then cut off the rest of this fabric batting and stabilizer. Just be careful not to cut your lining. And there we are. Next, we can turn this around. It helps to have some sort of um, turning device like this. This is just a little wooden dowel that is um, flat at the end. You don't want anything pointy because you'll accidentally poke right through your project and ruin it. Um, what this is for is just to help you with turning the fabric completely around. So we're poking this into the little ear outline right here. other side and then we've got it turned around. So what we want to do now is take our scissors, actually I'll use my embroidery scissors since it, this is a smaller job here, um, just poke a hole in this cutaway stabilizer enough to get your scissors in and then very carefully cut that stabilizer out. If you've seen my other videos, I have mentioned this in I think all of them, that if you accidentally cut the lining fabric while you're doing this step, there is a product called Freycheck. And it is in a small bottle, it's clear liquid, and it's at most fabric stores. And you just dot that on and it'll keep that um, that fabric from fraying. So next we need to close this up. So you just tuck in these little these these uh, edges right here to the inside and then you have two choices. You can either sew this closed by hand or you can use this wonderful product called Steam -a Seam which I love um, since we we used all um, all natural fibers in this bag, um, we can use that. We can use this with it because it, it needs to get hot enough in order to stick. So if you're using something like a polyester or a silk or a rayon, um, it would burn the fabric. So then in that case, you'd have to hand sew it. So I will uh, hold off on doing this um, just for... Uh, border prevention here. And I will move on to the next step, which is um, just opening your zipper up all the way and turning our bag right side out. I'm going to remove the tape over the ribbon. That is cool. And we're just turning that right side out. Use our stick again. And there we go. You can see our cool lining in there. And look at that. You've got a little bag. So we are not finished yet because as you can see on the sample that I made, we have a little zipper pull. So we will be doing that step next. We're ready to make the zipper pull for our sugar skull bag. And again, our supplies are a piece of felt, preferably wool blend because it wears better, and then a piece of eighth inch ribbon. And this is grain ribbon, which is um, a ribbon with this little rib texture in it. And it's nice and sturdy. And it's readily available locally and online. So what we're going to do first is lay our felt in the hoop, and it's going to stitch our outline. Now, um, what you can do, and I've done this in previous videos, is if you only have a small piece to work with and you don't want to risk not having enough of it, you can do the first step just on the stabilizer alone, back up to, on your machine, to go back to that first step after you've done that, um, and you can lay the felt over that placement stitch and then just go, go through it as normal. Um, I have a large piece, so I'm just going to just lay it in here and do it the normal way.
Next is the little center of the flower. And um, I'm using a yellow thread throughout, so I'm, I'm going to just keep that thread and not change to a different color. Okay, before we stitch the final step, we need to remove our hoop from the machine. And this process is very similar to making a felty, if you've done those before. And the only difference is that we're adding a piece of ribbon to turn that, that felty into a zipper pull. So I'm going to cut off the excess felt. Then cut a piece for the back. This is what we have so far. We're going to turn it over. And we need to fold our ribbon in half and then take a piece of tape. Then we're going to place the, the ribbon so that the edges are inside of our flower design. And then tape it down. Just like that, the tape is out here and the ends of the ribbon are inside the design. Then we're going to take our other piece of felt lay it over the entire thing and tape that down. Just like that. Then we can put it back in our machine and stitch out the last step. And there we go. We are ready to take it out of the hoop. Now we need to remove our tearaway stabilizer. And then we need to cut the excess felt around the edges. Now the trick to doing this is to not cut off your ribbon by accident. So this is how I do it. At the point where the ribbon is attached, I cut the two layers individually, one at a time. So I fold back my, my felt and the ribbon and cut the other side of the felt. Then I flip it around and do the opposite. And there you go. Then you won't cut off your ribbon by mistake. Then the rest of the flower you can cut out with, um, you can cut both sides, both pieces of felt at the same time. And there you go. You've got a completed zipper pull. And you are just going to, like this one, loop it through. And there you go. It's all set. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. I know I have, and I can't wait to make more of these. And I would really like it if you um, click the little thumbs up underneath this video to like it. And if you're so inclined, if you could leave me some comments. I love reading them. Any suggestions that you have uh, for, previous, or for, for future videos, and if you'd like to be uh, notified of future videos, just click on subscribe. But we'll see you soon. Happy crafting!